she's a friend of Peter's. She looks like a screen star. He's been hiding her from us, our shy, bashful, studious Peter. Face it, Tiger, you just hit the jackpot. Those iconic words herald the arrival of Mary Jane Watson. Peter Parker and Spider-Man's best girl, final girl, and game girl for many a fan. Mary Jane would skyrocket to popularity following her appearance. This with readers of Amazing Spider-Man, to the point where she eclipsed his intended long-running love interest, Gwen Stacy. Eventually leading to the decision, along with some other factors, to kill her off. The famous Gwen death. We did a whole retrospective on classic Gwen. Check it out. She used to be one of Peter's bullies, and Steve Ditko drew her with the angriest eyebrows. Mary Jane was a fun-loving party girl, who for many readers of the time embodied a free-spirited counterculture attitude. And her name was slang for marijuana at the time, which some people thought was code. Quick, start calling her MJ stat. However, that door opening reveal of Amazing Spider-Man 42 was not Mary Jane's first appearance or mention. It was, as just said, her reveal. The character had debuted years prior as a bit of a joke character. You don't even see her face. I'm Sasha, this is Casually Comics, and let's take a look at the largely forgotten, less iconic first appearance of Mary Jane Watson. Mary Jane Watson first debuts in Amazing Spider-Man number 25 in 1965. In what many deem to be a cameo, because she's not seen fully. She has a couple of lines, but you never see what she looks like. In this era, we're pre-Gwen, because she doesn't debut until Amazing Spider-Man number 31, and that's late in 1965. So Mary Jane predates her, but not in a recognizable form. At this point, Peter still has a harem, but it's just not as developed as it will be. Peter Parker has always had a string of love interests. There's a great panel from later on that puts a bunch from that time period on there and has eight women on it. And they all have little blurbs talking about him. It makes it sound like it's some kind of dating show reunion episode, like he was The Bachelor. I dated Peter a few times, but after my father died, I moved out west. I wonder if he remembers me. I don't, but I can't speak for Peter. But his ability to juggle all these women, it's a skill. This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes by a wide array of instructors with a focus on creativity and self-growth. If you're interested in expanding your skills, there's a class on here for you. Are you interested in animation, editing, how to grow or start a YouTube channel? There are classes in all those things. I'm always looking to improve, so I took a fun class about color correcting, because let's be real, it gets rough up in here sometimes. Jordy Vanderput, a YouTuber, has a class called Premiere Pro Lumetri 2020, Color Correct and Color Grade Like a Pro, which was fun, approachable, and got right to the fundamentals, and it was engaging. But that's not all I did. I also took a class on bath bomb making, because I'm multifaceted, and those things are expensive, and I'm cheap. With Skillshare, not only can you choose your classes, how long they are, you can also choose your instructors, leave off at any point, because they're broken down into chapters, and there are no ads. So they're perfect for if you have a busy schedule. If you're interested in joining and expanding your skill set, the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare, so you can start exploring your creativity today. Now back to learning about the evolution of Mary Jane. Mary Jane's creation is credited to Stan Lee and John Romita Sr. But the issue she debuts in is by Lee and Ditko. But the crediting makes sense, because one of the things that is iconic about Mary Jane is her appearance. And her look was designed by Romita, who was inspired heavily by then-popular actress Anne Margaret, specifically her look in Bye Bye Birdie. Now for issue 25, Peter was bouncing between Liz Allen and Betty Brandt. And that issue is noteworthy for more than Peter's love life. It's also the introduction of the Spider Slayer Mark I, and the introduction of Spencer Smythe. J. Jonah Jameson is utterly unhinged in this issue. Plus, we're in Ditko era Spider-Man. So Peter is in his more unlikable phase. He can be petty and manipulative and mean. For the time that Ditko was on the book, which was until Amazing Spider-Man 38, you get a different Spider-Man personality. It starts off one way and slowly starts to develop into a more and more unlikable person. It's fascinating. There are some fantastic and highly concerning panels in this issue. I have a soft spot for Ditko Spider-Man, probably because he didn't last forever, so you can look back with the safety of knowing that he's going to change. Look at this cover. Japan would have to censor this too tentacly. The robot is silver in the original coloration, but some of the digital colorings really lighten it up, and so you can end up with something that's pure white, which is amusing if your mind frequents the gutter, as mine does. This is a Ditko plot. It says so right there on the opening teaser page. So what does he have for us? Well, a very hip Peter, for one thing. Ah, uh, it's been a while since I've done my maligned Spider-Man and Peter Parker voice. I'm looking forward to it. One of the many rewards of being a good student is the fact that a pretty gal like Liz Allen might ask you to help her with her studies, as Peter Parker has just done. Good night, Liz. Hope you dig those formula now. I dig you even more, Petey. Peter is on his way home when he spots some car thieves. But he notices the police are close by, so he uses his Spidey signal, which I always forget he has, to lure them so they stop it. And he then gets some pictures. He looks so sketchy in the panels where he's taking pictures in this issue. But when he tries to sell them to Jameson, he's not interested. But Peter, as is often the case, needs the money. I need the money. He has to buy them. But you don't get the idea, Mr. Jameson. Those pics are dynamite. Think how bad they make Spider-Man look. He was beaten to some crooks by one lone officer. I never heard Peter Parker knock 
Spider-Man before. So Peter is willing to badmouth himself for money. This puts him with odds at Betty because as she points out, Spider-Man had just recently saved his Aunt May from Dr. Octopus. Yeah, but Betty, cash monies. Suddenly an inventor comes in, Smythe, who's been inspired by Jameson's vitriolic anti-Spider-Man editorials to build this spider-seeking robot. Jameson is the true menace. Peter is still on a quest for cash and also to get back at Jameson. So he decides to encourage him to test out this robot, something that Jameson was not interested in to start with. Cause he figures that the robot probably doesn't work and when it doesn't, he can earn some money taking pictures of Spider-Man defeating it. Easy money. He has to work so hard to persuade him too. He gets really into it. ex name Betty. If the robot should be able to wall Spider-Man, you'll get all the credit and if it doesn't, Who's to know? Besides, you know you're a lot smarter than Spider-Man could ever hope to be. He's only beaten you by dumb luck before. Sooner or later, you're bound to win. After all, look how successful you are. You're a born winner, JJ. He's so aggressive, I can't. Of course, the robot works, so it's a womp womp moment for Peter. Which this story frames as the infamous Peter Parker luck, only it's not really, it's more consequences. He made this happen. This was not luck. He pushed Jonah into this. He was gonna let the man leave. He's the one who assumed the robot didn't work. The rest of the issue deals with Peter having conflict with two sets of people after him. Flash, in full caveman mode, because Liz Allen dared spend time with Peter, so he asks him to meet him after school. Fight in the parking lot, or somewhere around the school. See you later, Petey. You creep. I warned you what would happen if you tried to two-time me with my girl. I'll be waiting for you after school today, and you better be there. The phrasing of that makes it sound like he's cheating on Flash. This amuses me. How dare you two-time me, I'll meet you after school. So Peter ends up having to run away from the robot, which can just sense him because it's using some kind of Geiger technology, that's what they say. So it looks like he's running away from Flash and the gang. But they end up actually delaying the robot because then they see the robot is chasing Spider-Man, they want to see Spidey, and they assume that he must be somewhere beyond Peter, but all of this gives Peter a chance to change into Spider-Man. That part of the story is pretty slick. This robot also has an interface that Jameson can look through, so he can see what's going on, he can control the robot, it's a bit like a drone. Only it also also projects his face into the head slot so he can taunt Spider-Man as he goes, and he just goes full supervillain. Recognize me, Spider-Man, it's your old pal, Jay Jonah. I finally found a way to clip your wings forever. How do you like being on the run, you costume freak? How does it feel to be up against your superior, namely Jay Jonah Jameson? Just calm down. To style it back several notches. Meanwhile, MJ time. In a completely unhinged move by Flash, he has gone to Peter's house to see if he's there so he can beat him up over there. They had a date. Liz decides to go in and ask Aunt May and bumps into Betty Brandt, who has come from the bugle looking for Peter to help deal with Jameson and this robot. The two try to ice each other out because they both like Peter, so it's all very catty and meow. Oh, look, Liz, I see you're surrounded by all those men implication skank. Followed by, oh, I guess you wouldn't have that problem, Betty. Implication forever alone. But all this is leading up to our MJ punchline. Now that you're here, I'd like you to meet another charming young lady. She's the niece of Mrs. Watson, my next door neighbor. Another girl? More competition? Mary Jane, this is Betty Brandt, and this is Liz Allen. Girls, I'd like you to meet Mary Jane Watson. She just dropped in to visit my nephew. Hello, girls. She's a friend of Peter's. She looks like a screen star. He's been hiding her from us, our shy, bashful, studious Peter. Shy and bashful are not words are used to describe Ditko Spider-Man. Also, several things. Liz and Betty have the exact same face. It is tripping me out. Also, you see Aunt May there implying that Mary Jane is Peter's friend already to try and drive a wedge between him and these girls because she's trying to pair him off with MJ. I see you, Aunt May. Devious. And I like that you can tell that there is no face drawn at all because there's no break in the cloth behind that plant. There is a tiny gap in the only other MJ panel here where she leaves the house and Flash sees her. And back at Aunt May's house. I'll come back some other time. Bye-bye, Mrs. Parker. Wow, who's that chick? Maybe she knows where Egghead is. You have a problem, Flash. <laughs> he even gets told to move on by a police officer because he's just loitering so aggressively. He was just standing there, menacingly. <laughs> Peter manages to get away from the robot, just barely. And he gets really weird about taking pictures of upset Jameson once he sees the robot has failed. Yes, he should be satisfied because Jameson was going so hard and that is annoying, but he just takes it to a whole other level. I wonder if he knows how beautifully his eyes listen when he gets angry. I'll just snap a few shots of this to chuckle over my old age. Nobody has any chill this issue. Also, I posted this panel in the community tab and everybody was just roasting the camera design. Peter is so questionable this issue. He's definitely hard to sympathize with than he is during the Ramita era. 
It's understandable why this Mary Jane entrance is less remembered. It's very much a throwaway joke and part of the B storyline. Before her unveiling, the joke is used again in issue 38, so it goes last issue. Once more, Aunt May is trying to set up a meeting between Peter and MJ, and he can't make it. I'm so sorry you can't stay any longer, Mary Jane. I'm sure Peter will be home most any minute now. I'd so like to meet him, Mrs. Parker, but some other time, perhaps. Is this a drug joke? Is that why she's always blocked by plants specifically? When she fully debuts in issue 42, it ends up working really well with this initial setup, despite this MJ not bearing a resemblance fashion-wise to Ditko's, and that it turns it into a third times the charm structure with the whole will he ever meet MJ gag. Romito really makes it pay off and also plays into that Parker look. The idea that here he was, missing this opportunity over and over again, this girl could be the one. Although that would come later and some don't agree with that, at this point it's very much just that, look at how hot she is, he was missing out on this hotness. MJ's first fill appearance works without prior knowledge of these plant jokes, but it does enhance what came before and make those cameos pay off. Those first appearances are very blink and you'll miss them. That was such a sad snap. There we go. There we go. Despite establishing a lot, even though the tone of Peter Parker's personality would change, the Ditko era can oftentimes be overlooked. A lot happened in those 38 issues. So that was Mary Jane's first appearance. Were you aware of this first kind of gaggy, jokey appearance? Jokey and gaggy? Joke gag. Wow, gaggy doesn't sound right. Were you aware of the extent of Peter's harem? Does Jameson need to be stopped? Share all your thoughts down below. While you're down there, please do all YouTube things. Like, share, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell notification so that you never miss a vid. Thanks so much for taking some time out of your day to spend discussing comics with me. I always appreciate it. I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.